Seasonality adjustments are a very specific tool developed by Google to help you weather large swings in performance, whether positive or negative, over a short period of time in your accounts. Now, I have seen some advertisers try to get a little creative and use these in some scenarios that just didn't really work out. So in this video, I want to walk you through what seasonality adjustments are, show you how to set them up, and then discuss the scenarios when you will and won't want to use them in your account. I'm going to start off in Google's help section about seasonality adjustments so that we can cover what they are fundamentally. For the most part, they're fairly easy to understand. Seasonality adjustments are an advanced tool that you can use in combination with smart bidding when you expect large changes in your conversion rates for upcoming promotions or sales or also depressed product performance time. As you can see here, Google says to only use these if you expect major changes in your conversion rate because any smaller changes is already being accounted for in smart bidding. Google is very proud of its smart bidding strategies and for the most part, I think they do smaller seasonality adjustments for you automatically pretty well. This is when there's going to be a drastic change in your performance over a short period of time. As you can see here, Google thinks that this seasonality adjustment that you provide as the advertiser is best from anything that runs one to seven days. Anything extended beyond that, like a 14 day time period, probably is best just to let the smart bid strategy sort itself out, figure things out on its own and not use a seasonal adjustment. In terms of compatibility, seasonality adjustments are available for search, shopping and display campaigns if they're using target ROAS or target CPA bid strategies. And they're also available for performance max and app campaigns using all of the bid strategies that are available for those campaign types. So there are some limitations in eligibility depending on what type of campaign you're using and which type of bid strategy you're using. But I would guess for the most part, you're probably using at least one combination of these campaign types and bid strategies that would let you use seasonality adjustments. Now that we know what they are, let's hop into an account and start to apply some seasonality adjustments and show you how you would set them up in your own account. In the Google Ads interface, to get to seasonality adjustments, you'd need to come over to the main navigation, go to tools, come down to budgets and bidding, and then go to adjustments. By default, you're going to end up on the seasonality adjustments tab. There are bid strategy exclusions, which is for another video that you can check out at the top of the screen right now. But we're already where we need to be for a seasonality adjustment. So you can either click the blue plus button down here or up here to create a new seasonal adjustment. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that there are two different types of seasonal adjustment, budget and conversion rate. For the most part, we're really just going to focus on conversion rate because that's the most specific use case for seasonality adjustments. But just real quick, we'll cover it just since we're here. If you click budget, you then get to give it a name. You can describe it. You can give a start and end date. And you'll notice down here that budget adjustments must be three days or more. You can select a campaign. And then the adjustment that you're going to get is any additional average daily budget to the campaign that you select here. So effectively, a seasonal adjustment for budget is just saying over this short period of time, three to seven days, I want my campaign budget to be this much more than it currently is. That way you can scale up above your regular average daily budget to capture any of the increased demand from your seasonal event. That one's pretty straightforward and doesn't have quite as many restrictions. You could also accomplish this simply by either changing your budget manually or by creating automated rules for your budget to increase and then decrease. But enough of that, we came here for the conversion rate adjustment. Again, you get to give your adjustment a name. For this, I would always suggest being as specific as you possibly can and calling out what the event is and potentially even the date range that you're planning to run this for. So here I'm saying that a Black Friday, Cyber Monday seasonality event is going to occur in 2025. And then I have the specific dates that I would have this run for. I would then set my start and end date and time accordingly, which might look something like that. And then we get to start to choose the scope of our seasonality adjustment. So here you get to decide what campaign type you want this to apply for. Remember, it applies to search, display, shopping, performance max, and app campaigns. And you can tell it to apply effectively to all campaign types and all campaigns within those types. Or you can choose specific campaigns that you want to use in your account. I'm not going to open this up because then we would just have to blur a bunch of different names. But if you wanted to, you could apply your seasonality adjustment into individual campaigns. Maybe Black Friday, Cyber Monday is something that your entire account 
will have some sort of seasonality adjustment for. So you'd want to use campaign type to hit everything. But let's say you were running just a really short term promotion that would only impact a certain set of campaigns in your account. Maybe those product groups are grouped all together. You could just apply this seasonality adjustment to those campaigns and leave everything else out of it since you expect performance to be the same. Next, you get to choose the devices that people can convert on. You'll see here, this won't apply to app campaigns, but if your campaigns are running on all of the devices and you expect that there's going to be an impact on performance across all these devices, probably suggest you just leave all these active. And then down here at the bottom, you get to adjust your conversion rate. Now, what this is gonna be is basically the expected difference in conversion rate compared to your baseline over this period of time. So as you can see in Google's example that it has here, if you expect conversion rates to increase by 50% during your three-day sale, add a 50% conversion rate adjustment into this space. So here for their example, you would say 50%. And they give you some numbers for an example down below. So an estimated conversion rate or an average conversion rate of 5% is expected to become 7.5% during this sale. It's a really important factor to know that this conversion rate that you're adding in here is the increase or decrease compared to your baseline percent. You are not adding in what you expect your actual conversion rate to be. You're adding in the percent change compared to baseline. Just make sure you have that one right. But I also wanna talk about decreasing your conversion rate. More often than not, we talk about seasonality with this type of short impact to mean something where you're running a sale, you expect to have high volume, lots of people coming to the site and lots of people converting. But there are some scenarios where you might expect a decrease in conversion rate on your site. The example I use here more often than not is around a B2B company that's releasing new software that generates lots of industry buzz. There's probably a lot of people who are gonna search for that company's brand name, maybe the new name of the product itself, or maybe their services in general, but is likely just trying to understand what they're announcing, what's happening, and they're not actually ready to buy. So effectively, you have a lot more people coming to the site, but the same number of people converting, so your conversion rate goes down. This could also be true if you end up having some really bad press and you think a lot of people are gonna come to your site, keeping your conversion rate, again, lower than it would be. Or let's say if you sell products, maybe you have a product recall. There might be a really big depression in the conversion rates that you see, but a higher number of people coming to the site. So again, a lower conversion rate. Don't assume that these seasonality adjustments only apply to positive increases. There may be some scenarios where you expect to see a sudden drop in your conversion rate for a few days. Might make sense to add in an adjustment here just to get ahead of it. Once you're done with that, all you would do is click save and the seasonality adjustment would be listed in your account. You would expect to see a decrease or increase in conversion rate over the time period that you applied. And the Google smart bidding strategy that you use would accommodate for that and wouldn't react too drastically one way or another. And that brings us to effectively just some use cases of when you want to use seasonality and when you might not want to use seasonality adjustments. So good use cases for this are going to be anything that is a short term impact anywhere from one to seven days. And you expect to have a large increase or decrease in your conversion rate from your baseline. Think anything that's 25% higher or lower than what you're currently seeing. These are gonna be the best use cases for a seasonality adjustment. If you're using smart bidding for any of those campaign types, or if you're using performance max or app campaign types or any bidding strategy that's associated with it. Now you can probably infer these, but I do wanna cover some scenarios a little more explicitly when seasonality adjustments don't make sense. The first is if you're using manual bidding in search, display, shopping campaigns, manual bidding will not have any expected changes based on conversion rate because you're already taking care of the bidding. So if you're using that bid strategy, seasonality adjustments will not help you one way, shape or form. Same thing for those same campaign types. If you're not using target ROAS or target CPA, a seasonality adjustment will not really help you. If you're bidding toward target impression share, Google doesn't really care what your conversion rate is one way or another. So if for three or four days, you're not converting as well as you did, or you're converting way better, that bid strategy doesn't care because it's only focused on impression share. 
Now, let's say you have the right bidding strategy for the right campaign type and you are focused on conversions. If your seasonal impact is gonna be longer than 14 days, it's probably best to just let the bid strategy take care of that for you. After a couple days, it'll notice the change, it'll notice the impact, and it'll adjust accordingly to try and hit your numbers with the new increased or decreased conversion rate that you're seeing through your campaigns. And then lastly, if the impact to your conversion rate for this seasonal period, even if it is for the right three to four day range that we're typically looking at, if that impact is less than a factor of 25% of your current conversion rate, it's probably a best scenario just to let the bid strategy take care of it. Anything smaller than that 25% mark is not really gonna have as big of an impact that Google can't kind of automatically incorporate into its bid strategy for you. So it probably makes sense not to worry about seasonality adjustments if your impact is lower than 25% of your baseline conversion rate. So overall, these can be really impactful adjustments for your account, but you just need to use them in scenarios where they make the most sense. They don't take a lot of time to set up, but again, you wanna make sure that you have all of the right bid strategies in place for the right campaign types to make sure that seasonality adjustments will work for you. If you have any additional questions about seasonality adjustments or anything else in the Google Ads interface, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. We really appreciate it. If you liked it, give us a thumbs up below. If you really liked it, maybe think about subscribing to the Paid Media Pros YouTube channel and you'll get alerted every time a new video drops. If you really, really liked it, you can help support the channel by checking out some of the t-shirts that we're wearing on our merch shelf, as well as looking at the Super Thanks button.